What's going on everybody? This is Danon with Headstrong Hats. I have come up with a new little design with um, wrapping cloth over cardboard and I've made you know a couple different uh, brands and in this video I want to show you the process that I that I used to accomplish this task. A full disclosure before I get too far into this this is not my original idea. It was originally an idea from uh, Roger Daggett with RDC Woodrow, who um, makes hats similar to um, my template. He's got his own little spin on it, you know, with some extra stitching and stuff like that. But he was the one that uh, kind of inspired me to take a, um, a, a hat or some beer boxes and actually wrap cloth around it. I think he did plenty of Crown Royal box, Crown Royal bags wrapped over the cardboard and um, bandanas and stuff like that. But I thought this would be a, a cool opportunity to, you know, support North Carolina and their, their college teams and stuff like that. Plus, Jack Daniels has always been a big hit for, for me and my sales. And, um, yeah, I don't want to take anything away from Roger, but this is kind of uh, how I did it. Um, I do a, a different process than what he does, I'm pretty sure, because this panel, I actually separate the crown into three different um, segments. This, this is going to be one segment, this is going to be another segment, and that's a third one. So five pieces total, one, two, three, four, five, and they all get stitched together. Um, you can see in there I kind of have to stitch everything together because what I do is I lay my template out first and cut them apart and then wrap the cloth around it so that all of these seams are nice and tight. There's many different fabric types that you can use. For instance, this one is a light uh, flannel type material and it gives it um, like a brushed cotton look. These other hats are made out of just a, a regular uh, broadcloth cotton and it's fairly cheap. But in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make one of those out of this one yard um, piece of 100% cotton I got from Walmart for $3. So this is going to be a fairly inexpensive project. You're going to be out a couple bucks for that. You're going to have some piping involved and uh, of course the eyelets and some heat transfer vinyl that I use for my Cricut machine and do an iron on and create a design so let's jump into it so the first step that I'm going to do is of course use my handy dandy super 77 spray adhesive and we're going to adhere these two sheets together and then draw the template out on top of that Now, now that we've got the template drawn out, I always label everything. This would be side one because it's going to be cut out 
into these different segments and I need to know how they're gonna match back up. So this is gonna be side one, of course. And then this is gonna be side one. We'll flip it around. We'll make this side two. Side two. And side two. And the reason I did the brown on this side and the white on this side is because depending on what kind of uh, cloth you get, it might show through. So the white is actually going to make the red a brighter color. So that was the idea behind that. So now all I got to do is cut out these sections and then we'll go from there. Okay, so we got these sections separated out and you can see that's why I have them labeled so that I'll know how to line everything back up. And one more thing I need to do to this piece is contour this edge right here because um, as you can see, and unlike the other hats where these two pieces would fold down together, this is actually going to give me something to put a label on by having this, this flat piece on the front. And so what I'm going to do is just gently curve this little point right here and cut straight down. All right, now I have all my pieces ready to go. They're all cut out, double-sided, and they're ready for fabric. I saved you the agony of watching me glue and cut all these out because if you've seen it once, you've seen it a million times, but these are going to be the top and bottom parts of my brim. Of course, I put it in white, just like I did those. Oh. So you should have some of this scrap left over from the initial cut, uh, from cutting out your template. I, I make these little strips like this out of, out of this leftover scrap. So that way I have something to patch all this stuff together. What am I doing? I'll go like this. Just like that. So what you'll do with these is once you get your fabric wrapped around, you'll have to put these on here like this and then we'll, it'll actually work as a, a mending plate to hold these sections together. And I'll show you more on that, but I just wanted to let you know that you do need to make some of these strips out of some of the scrap that you had. So what I'm gonna do now is go iron this and get most of these wrinkles out and then we'll, we'll lay it out and um, just trace out our pattern. Okay, so now that I have my fabric ironed out and most of the wrinkles out of it, I'm sure you could probably wash it prior to doing all this, but I usually just go ahead and iron it. Um, the next step is gonna be, I'll go ahead and lay out your, your brim Go ahead and uh, make sure that you can cut out enough for this. And then you'll know how much extra material you'll have to kind of lay out the, the rest of your, your stuff. So I'm gonna start with cutting out these templates. And one of the best tools to cut this fabric is a rotary tool like this. Because if you use a blade like this, sometimes the fabric will drag and pull up but a rotary tool like this will just pretty much cut right through it.
All right, so now that I got everything um, cut out and ready to go, the next step is to apply some spray adhesive to your fabric and also to your cardboard. And the key to doing that is to make a nice even coat over this where it, it'll look kind of frosty and put another coat on here real light. And once you come back over to your table, I would lay your fabric down first and then get the orientation correct for your cardboard and lay it down. And then we can roll it out and then wrap the fabric around and we'll get the sewing machine out and stitch everything together. So I'm gonna go put a coat of spray adhesive on this and come back to the table and go from there. So you can see how this fabric is kind of frosty for where I just put a dusting of spray adhesive on there. We'll get that to lay flat. Let's take my cardboard very carefully. Drop that on there. Roll it out a little bit. Now what I do, this is gonna be my bottom and this is gonna be the top. I need to leave a little bit of material up here so that it can be sewn onto this part like this. I know it'll all make sense here in a little while, but I'm gonna take my razor blade and cut straight back like this. Fold that fabric up. So that is going to be the side panel.
All right, now that I have everything uh, glued down and wrapped around, it's time to add my stitching all the way around these edges here. I'll add some stitching here. And what that is gonna do, that is gonna hold this down and keep it from peeling up over time. And it's gonna add that structural integrity. All right, that's my favorite word, structural integrity. It's gonna add some definite quality to holding this down. And I already have these guys cut to length. This is the longer section, which is gonna mend this onto here. So I'm gonna get my hot glue gun, heat up my hot glue, put a bead of glue here and secure that down. And then I will add some more glue on the back of this and patch that over the top of that. And what it will do is hold those two sections together. And then I'll go back and add another stitch across the top of that and across the top of this. But first, what I have to do is to make it easier for sewing is just go ahead and do the preliminary stitches on this and get that stuff um, tidied up. I'll make, I'll make some stitches down the side of this and I'll make one across the bottom on this line right here. This line is a reference line for how tall the hat is gonna be from the top of the head to the top of the ear. In this instance, I did four and a half inches. If you have a shorter head, you can increase this gap at the bottom to a four and a half from here to here. Or if you have a larger head and you wanna make it the hat taller, you can obviously make that adjustment there. But yeah, the next step is going to be um, setting up the sewing machine and running some stitches around the the uh, the inner part right here to keep all this stuff tacked down and while I'm at it I'll probably go ahead and add my elastic to the inside of this and then once we get everything stitched and put together um, it'll be time to put the the decals on and start assembly all right so I've got my sewing machine set up and uh, I apologize my workstation is conveniently right beside the hot water heater. And you can probably hear that going on right now. But um, this is uh, going to be my bottom part of the brim. I determined that because it looks like there's just a little speck of something right there. I'm not sure how that got there, but I'll leave this for the bottom portion of the brim. That way it'll be underneath and less noticeable. But we're gonna go back to my go-to woven elastic to put on the inside of this. But the first thing I'm gonna do is um, get my sewing machine and run a guideline about an eighth of an inch around the inside. And that will kind of give me an idea of how far I want to put my elastic band on the inside. So I'll do that now. So now that I've established a good guideline there, I can go back in for the second trip and add my elastic.
Now, before I get all the way to the end, I do want to add a side note. I'm going to take and cut a little sliver of this cardboard because when I got to match up these two ends right here, when you go sewing through the elastic, it sometimes it doesn't penetrate the two layers and you'll get nesting of thread underneath. But what I'm going to do is when I get to this portion, I'll stick this um, underneath and it will actually add some backing. It'll be a backing plate for these two layers. So when the needle strikes through, it will have a hard surface to go through on the back of this and allow for the needle to go through and, and not bind up. So I'm going to stick that right there and mute in here in a second. So you can see how that added a nice strong backing plate for it and the needle was able to puncture through and not create any nesting with the thread. Cut this excess off here. And you can see how the thread was able to tack this down so it's never even it's never going to come up and then this outer portion will get done when the two surfaces are put together when i do these two together and i put the piping in there that's when that stuff will get stitched together so that was the bottom now this is going to be the tops Now for the top, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run two rows on the inside here, just for um, to tack all this stuff down. Find my middle.
now that's stitched together and it's got that mending plate everything's intact everything's wrapped stitched now I'll just repeat that same process for, for this one and then we'll add the other parts So that will leave you room to put a decal here, put a decal here, something there. And this will fold over. And you won't be able to see anything other than the fabric that is folded up underneath. Yes. All right, so that's everything put together. You got the one, two, three, four, five different sections stitched together mended by this um, little plate right here and then everything is stitched you could actually use um, a different color thread but I like the contrast of the, the red and the white because of what is going to be um, on here so the next step I'm going to have to do is kind of get things as if I were to put them together what I want to do is line these guys up I want to put it just like that and kind of trace a line I have a, a limestone pin here that will actually wash away but what I'm going to do is just kind of give myself a guide I want to mark, I want to mark a guideline here And I'll do the same thing on this side. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another row of stitching right here, right here, right here, and here. Because once these are glued down together, um, obviously the, the hat is going to be in a, a rounded position and it will tried to pull apart and I don't want it to pull this fabric off of the of the cardboard so by adding that line of stitching there it keeps the the material secured to the cardboard and will um, not let anything pull up and pull away Yep, so you won't even be able to see that line once everything is folded over. All right, so that is that. There's the crown. You got the top. You got your bottom. Next step is going to be adding my decals onto the crown and to the bottom of the brim and then what we'll do is once everything is um, ironed on then I'll build the crown and put everything together so if you guys ended up liking this video and want to see the second one um, just hang around for a couple days and uh, I should have the other one out soon so um, until then we'll see you later